Good evening, everyone. It's seven o'clock. It's Thursday. It's Dr. McCoy, and it's time for our weekly gathering. I hope you've had a great day. I am so excited about this evening's lesson because we have actually reached uh, the gospel according to Luke. So we're going to start with the book of Luke on this evening, and we're going to learn much about this gospel. So if this is your first time, I want to welcome you. If you've been here before, then welcome back. It's time to get into another book of the Bible. Now, many of you know that we have studied the, uh, the minor prophets in the Old Testament and the major prophets in the Old Testament. We've also studied the book of Mark and the book of Matthew. And so now we are in the book of Luke. So I'm giving you some time to get to Luke I'm going to really give us information about Luke on this evening before we delve completely into this great book of the Bible, okay? So I'm so glad that you're here and that we can start together. If you're coming in after Thursday, that's fine. Thank God for social media <laughs> for the opportunity to record this. So Luke was a physician and Luke was a companion of Paul. Now, when we hear gospel, I want to always remind us what that means. Because sometimes people think that the gospel is like a gospel song. And that makes sense because you hear gospel music, right? Um, people might think of gospel as just anything, you know. And so this is why we have Bible study so we can understand what a gospel is. I told us before that the gospel message is the life, the birth, the uh, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel message. Okay. A gospel song would be something that we hear on the radio. Okay. And then there's a gospel, uh, which simply means like if we were to think about the old English, it's a word that means good news. A gospel. So we are in a gospel, good news, a gospel book of the Bible. So when we studied the Old Testament, uh, the minor prophets and the major prophets, those were, that was not, neither of those was a gospel. All right. But Luke is a gospel. So when the first Christians wanted to record the good news um, about, you know, uh, the man who was God, there was not a familiar form of literature for them to use that seemed suitable. So then here are these Christians who are just like, man, you know, uh, you know, we don't write the kinds of autobiographies or sacred texts, you know, that are common in the Greek or that are common in uh, Roman or Jewish culture. So instead of doing that, they created a new form a gospel or the gospel. And what they considered was this would be writings that would tell of Jesus's earthly ministry. So the gospels were composed of scenes of the sayings of Jesus's life remembered uh, by his disciples. Um, and those stories were passed on. So when we consider the apostles, they faithfully recalled both individual statements and the overall progress of Jesus's time with them. So I want you to think about your time last week with a family member or a friend or maybe your time with a co-worker. And I want you to think about how important that would be for someone to read about years after you all are gone. I want you to think about that. Right now, we may not think it's that big of a deal, but later, you know, centuries later, imagine people reading about your last week's experience. Well, think about a gospel like that. It's a good news uh, manuscript, if you will, about uh, people's time with Jesus over time. And so Luke said that by the time he wrote his gospel, we're going to see in Luke chapter 1, verse 1, he actually declares that by the time he wrote his gospel, many had undertaken to uh, draw up an account of the things that had been uh, fulfilled among the people. That's what he says. So apparently that would tell us that other Christians had begun to record what the apostles remembered 
um, of Jesus's words and deeds. So Luke is letting us know that this is something that a practice that had already been happening. So by the time I started doing it, there are some other folks too. So that means that you can see this good news story through the lens of some other folks who did it before me. So he was able to uh, speak on or to write about what went on in Jesus's earthly ministry. So as we study Luke's gospels, my friends, we need to point out certain features. We need to point out features that mark uh, Luke's unique contribution to scripture. That's what we're going to do because Luke is not going to be like a Mark that we study. Luke is not going to be like uh, Matthew that we study. And then by the time we get to John, we'll see that John is not like either of them as well. So this Luke is a physician, as I mentioned before, and this Luke is a writer. Now, remember, I've always said that when we start studying books of the Bible, we need to consider who wrote it. What was their occupation? What did they do? Where did they come from? Um, does it speak of their age? Does it tell certain, uh, you know, just details about who they were? Well, when we look at Luke, Luke was Paul's beloved physician. So not just a physician, but Paul's beloved physician. He actually traveled with Paul uh, on, the, on Paul's second missionary journey. And on Paul's second missionary journey, that is even when Paul established the church at Philippi. So when we read in the New Testament, the book of Philippians, that means that Luke would have been present with Paul during that time. Because when, uh, when Paul reached Philippi, Luke probably remained there in Philippi. Uh, Luke also went with Paul to Palestine. Uh, when Paul was arrested in Jerusalem and sent to be a prisoner in Rome, Luke accompanied him. So Luke and Paul, you know, were they knew each other. So here they were hanging tight. And also the travels were significant because it would have given Luke opportunities to meet many of Jesus's original disciples and even eyewitnesses to Jesus's life. So some of the things that are in the book, book of Luke may not necessarily be firsthand information on what Luke saw, but it's still uh, feasible because he would have interviewed and met some folks who told them what they saw. And also, uh, Paul would have had an understanding of the Savior. And so Paul may have influenced some of what Luke wrote as well. So there are so many events that are recorded that we're going to see in Luke's gospel. Even um, the, the life of Mary in uh, the gospel of Luke, Mary's life, you know, is uh, really highlighted in ways that the other gospel stories or the other gospels simply don't do. So many people suspect that Luke may have interviewed even Mary about her son, Jesus. So, you know, so Luke um, was not present at every event, um, but he definitely, uh, you know, had some people around who were trustworthy. You know, I know we say we can't believe everything people say, <laughs> you know, and, and that is that can be true. But that is why I always say when we read the Bible, we always pray and say, Lord, understand that the Bible is written by humans, you know, um, but inspired by the Holy Spirit. So God, please help us to see and to extract the eternal truth. So even where a human flaw is present, you're saying something eternal. So help me to focus on that and not to focus on, well, was Luke really there? You know, he interviewed somebody. Mm. And then for a matter of fact, we think he was born a Gentile, but... We think he may have become a Jew, you know, before he heard of Christ, but we're not really sure. Like some things we, they're speculation, right? I mean, because even now, none of us are perfect, right? So when we read the Bible, we're not reading it so that we can say that everything that's written here is perfect. So whenever people try to attack the Bible, I try to remind them, I never say it that this was a perfect book because of the people who wrote it.
I've always believed that it's, it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. So it's a great handbook for me to know better. So I, I don't know where perfection is in humanity, but I do know the God who helps us to be better. And this book helps me to do that. So if Luke dropped the ball on some things, I don't know. He was a physician. And for what I understand, human beings that are physicians, they practice medicine. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they call it a practice, right? <laughs> so if, if Luke was a physician, then he practiced what he did. You know, and he was a human, you know. And I know that my God is perfect. And whatever God wants to reveal to me, to us in the book of Luke, we're going to get exactly what we need as we study these, I think it's 20, what is it, 24 chapters? Let me see. I think it's about 24 or so chapters. Huh, I'm right about that. Look at there. <laughs> I knew that. So yeah, there's 24 chapters. So out of these 24 chapters, what I do know is God is going to give us everything that we need. So when we read the book of Luke, Luke's gospel, uh, what we're going to see is that Luke could not detach who he was from what he was writing. Luke was indeed a physician. So what we're going to see is that sometimes we're going to detect signs of Luke's training as a physician in the details that he chooses to include in his book. Uh, when, for example, when recounting uh, miracles, like healing miracles, he's going to tell it differently, you know, that's why we have to pay attention. That's why I go word for word, right? I try to go verse by verse. He's going to recount those healing miracles perhaps differently than what we read in Mark and what we read in Matthew uh, because he's going to use technical uh, Greek medical words to describe an ailment because he's a physician. So think about what it is that you do. Or if you're retired, think about what you've done, okay? I want you to think about the things that you've done for work at any time in your life. And then I want you to think about going back to writing that story, like I said at the top of our study. Let's say that you were writing about last week uh, and you and your coworker or you and a family member or something like that. It, it would be difficult for you to, to detach what you are and or what you do <laughs> uh, from your writings. You might write it in a way and you're describing something to help us understand what happened last week in your life. And you're going to use descriptive words that are familiar to you, right? And you do that because you care so much about us understanding the story. Well, that's what Luke is going to do. So Matthew and Mark use layman's terms because they weren't physicians. Oh, but not Dr. Luke. He's going to use medical words to describe ailments. So Luke includes uh, in, his, um, in his book even sayings in which Jesus compared himself to a physician. Hmm. So, remember, I know you already know this. Remember where the Bible says, Jesus says something like, uh, those who are not sick don't need a, uh, what does he say? You got it. Yeah. Those who, those who are well, you know, they don't need a, but those who are sick, they need a, hmm. Have you ever thought about how that was written? So, see, that's why Bible study is so important because we start to grab things that's just like, huh. So then we read the Bible and we know that it's not just to inspire us and things like that, but it's to inform us about who these people really were. So Luke, the physician, wrote about Jesus comparing him to a physician when he says something like, those who are not sick don't need a physician. See that? That's why this book is going to be exciting. We get to start. We get to start. So um, another thing in the book of Luke is that Luke is going to use, as we journey through, he's going to especially be fond of the word salvation and saved. Okay? The word salvation and saved. Um, and so those Greek in Greek understand, as he's using that, in Greek, those words also mean healing and healed. So salvation and saved, healing and healed. Isn't that what a physician would focus on? I'm just trying to get you excited about the book of Luke. <laughs> Hopefully by the time we finish this one, we will see Luke 
Dr. Luke in ways that maybe we just haven't before. And that's the point of our, our study. So it suggested that um, like the time in which Luke wrote, it's just varied. So I won't even get into that. So different scholars think that the date is one thing and other scholars think that it's another thing. But it is the longest book in the New Testament. And uh, understand that in the days of antiquity, at least in Luke's day, at that time, books were handwritten on scrolls of something called papyrus reed. And papyrus scroll could scarcely have been made longer without falling apart. So it's not like our books that we have today. I have, a, have another Bible here, the Good News Bible. But, you know, it would not have been, you know, like what we think of today as I'm saying Luke's book, as if he wrote it like this, but it would have been on, uh, you know, scrolls and it, it, it stood the test of time. <laughs> so now we have, you know, our, our Bible, our books. And so, uh, the book is long, you know, it's, it's the longest book in the new Testament and it's powerful. And it's also addressed to, uh, Theophilus, Theophilus. So when you open to uh, the very first chapter, you will, you will see that. And so Theophilus, who is Theophilus? Hmm. Well, understand that Theophilus means the lover of God. So there are some scholars who believe that when Luke refers to Theophilus, Luke may have made up a name to symbolize all those who come to his book and learn about Jesus. So all of us are Theophilus, <laughs> those of us who are lovers of God. So some people believe that. So you can think of it that way if you want. So when he says Theophilus, he's talking about me. Dear Theophilus, <laughs> lover of God. But then it was common in Luke's day uh, for the book to be dedicated to a wealthy person. So then there are those who are like, no, I mean, it made, that name made me lover of God, but Theophilus was like a particular person who actually helped to fund Luke's book. So when he's talking to Theophilus, he's doing that out of respect. He helped to pay for the publishing of the manuscript. So Theophilus was a common Greek name. And so this man may have been an educated Gentile. And so Luke is, is talking to him. So isn't it interesting that... As, you know, these people are writing and we consider these books of the Bible that they necessarily didn't think that we would be here in 2024, like reading it and like, who is Theophilus? <laughs> so he wouldn't say Theophilus, the such and such and such, because he already knows who Theophilus is. So like if you were writing a letter to someone, you wouldn't include detailed information about who the person is because you know who you're writing to. Hmm. So... Is he writing to lover of God, Theophilus? Or is he writing to this educated Gentile, you know, this new convert, you know, or interested pagan? But um, the fact of the matter is you're going to see the book addressed to Theophilus. All right. So when we look at Luke, I want to be sure that we consider really the first part there. I'm only going to read verses uh, Luke chapter one verses one to four, because that's the prologue. And right now, I hope I'm giving you an overview. That's what I'm attempting to do <laughs> um, before we really get into the book so that we can know who Luke is. Remember I said before, in our studies, I want us to see these people. I don't want it to be like when we were like kids, maybe in Sunday school or Bible study, and it's kind of like we're listening and it's like, oh, that's some old dude from like forever ago, you know, in the Bible. No, 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 no. I want us to really see Luke. That's why I'm taking time to do this. So in our Bible studies, I want us to see him. So what, what you need to do now, we have 24 chapters. So that means we're going to be with Dr. Luke for quite some time. I want you to, let's just do this, you know, for fun or for the purposes of like being serious about seeing this guy. I want you to think about a good doctor that you've had or that you know of. Think of a good, I'm talking about a medical doctor, not a doctor like me of letters, but an MD, <laughs> not a PhD, an MD. I want you to think about a physician. And I want you to think about one that you respect or that you know. Maybe one in your community. It may be one that you've had before. If you're somebody who delivered a baby, it may be an OBGYN. Is that who y'all go to? I think that's who you go to, OBYN or something. <laughs> or OB, I think you say OB. Maybe you don't say the G-Y-N part. I don't know. But 
Think about a doctor, okay, a medical doctor, and think about one that you really like. And I didn't say that right, so if you want to tell me who it, what it is, OB. Maybe it's called an OB. But anyway, it may be a oncologist, that kind of doctor. There's so many different types of doctors. But I want you to get that person in your head and OBGYN. Oh, so I said it right. Thank you, Sister Samantha. I thought it was like something else. Okay. Hadn't had a baby, so wouldn't know that. <laughs> I know my limitations. Thank you. Okay, so um, let this doctor, this physician, be a man, please. Let's, let's let him be a man just for the sake of we're trying to get a Luke person in our minds. So I'm thinking about a doctor that I used to have, and he was a really good doctor. And he had been a doctor since, like, I don't know, since forever, like before I was born. <laughs> And he wasn't just a good doctor because, like, he, like, knew his stuff. He was a good doctor because he had really good bedside manner. You know, he didn't make me feel like he was just trying to get me out of there so he can get to the next person. So I, I just really like this guy. But now I'm not in his area, so I can't have him as a doctor anymore. <laughs> so let's think now. Okay. So get your doctor, get your physician in your mind, and that's who you're going to think of for the next however long it takes us to get through the book of Luke. So you got him? Okay, you got your Luke. All right. Much respect. All right. So what we have in Luke chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 is a prologue. Now, prologue, as many of us know, is simply an introduction. Prologue is simply a preamble. You've heard that word. Or there's another word, uh, a forward or a preface. So Luke chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 is a prologue. So what Luke does in the prologue is he states the purpose of his book. I like that. I like that. The purpose of his book, just flat out, that's what he does. So we're only going to read those four verses so we can understand what the prologue is. And as we journey through the book of Luke, we're going to look for examples of the following in Jesus's, uh, the following things in Jesus's teaching and actions like ordinary people. We're going to look for ordinary people. We're going to look for medical interests. Remember, you've got your, your uh, physician in your head. We're going to look for personal details because remember, he's a physician. When you go to your doctor, they ask personal details on a scale from 1 to 10. Or they'll show you like this little picture where 0, the little face looks like, ooh, like you just feel terrible. That was a really ugly face. Like, ooh. And then number 10 is like a smiley face. And so they want to know personal details. You know what I'm saying? Like age and what you're feeling like and how's the medication working? Ah, we need to look at that, personal details, and then sign uh, signs of emotion. So how is Jesus like a physician? How does Luke paint Jesus as a physician, even being a good bedside manner physician? So signs of emotion. So when we think about a prologue, in classical Greek style, Luke is going to begin his work with a formal dedication to this uh Theophilus, all right? This man, again, who probably helped pay for the publishing of his book. So this dedication is going to offer clues to Luke's intent in writing his book. Why did you write this? What are the themes? We're going to look for themes, you know, recurring um, ideas, th things that are recurring throughout the book, like salvation. I mentioned that word, right? And uh, the purpose, you know, to teach Gentile readers about salvation. We're going to look at that. Um, we're going to look at how Luke tells the Jesus story in an orderly fashion. And this is important because those of us who are preachers need to tell the story in an orderly fashion. So whenever we read scripture and we're about to pray, we're about to preach or we're about to teach, we need to make sure that we're doing that in an orderly fashion because people are hearing what it is that we're saying. And we need to make sure that we do things like pause so that they can have a moment to reflect on what we just said. They need to understand the purpose for this message. Like, what exactly are you talking about? And whatever you read, you deal with. Why? Because that is an orderly way to present a thing. And this physician is going to show us how to do that even better. All right? So let's look at uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, okay? Luke chapter 1. Verses 1 to 4. So I'm going to read from, hmm, which Bible am I going to read? I have so many Bibles. Let me show you. Let me show you this. Let 
look at this. I was looking for this Bible. I couldn't find it. Oh, man. I had this Bible well before seminary. It's one of those comparative study Bibles. So it has, as you can see there, I know it's backwards, but it has the New International Version in there, the Amplified Version, the King James Version, and the New American Standard. I think, is that what that is? New, it's in, a, yeah, the, wait a minute, New American, updated New American Standard Bible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So sometimes what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from these. Now, I know our Bible studies are just supposed to be 30 minutes, and I'm going to do that. I just get really excited now that I have this Bible. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. So, hmm, let's see. So I have four different opportunities to read four verses. So it's just four verses. Five minutes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm only reading Luke chapter one, verses one to four, and then next week we'll delve in, okay? So in the King James Version, Luke says, and remember now, this is the prologue of the preface. The introduction. For for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order to declare of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. What? King James Version? <laughs> okay, let's go to the Amplify. Okay, Amplify says, since as is well known, that's in like parentheses, right? So if I'm reading this a little weird, I'm reading it the way it's written in the Amplified. Since as is well known, Many have undertaken to put in order and draw up a thorough narrative of the surely established deeds which have been accomplished and fulfilled in and among us, exactly as were handed down to us by those who from the official beginning of Jesus' ministry were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, that is, of the doctrine concerning the attainment through Christ of salvation in the kingdom of God, it seems good and desirable to me, and so I have determined, also after having searched out diligently and followed all things closely and traced accurately the course from the highest to the minutest detail from the very first to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus. My purpose is that you may know and fu the full truth and understand with certainty and security against error of the accounts, histories, and doctrines of the faith of which you have been informed and in which you have been orally instructed. That's just four verses. Can you see now? You know what? No. Can you see now why I say to you, and let me just stand up for a minute. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just stepping over here. Can you see now why I keep saying to you, I'm going to read from the contemporary English version of scripture. <laughs> I'd even go to the uh, new international version or the updated new American standard Bible. Okay. And I didn't read the good news, but look at here. Now, can you see? That's why I always say whatever version you have is fine. I'm going to stick with this quite a bit because I'm trying to study with a group of good people, and I just feel like this book, this particular version, is appropriate. Would you really want to hear me, you know? <laughs> Some people say, where's the word? Okay, here are these four verses in the contemporary English version. You see why I gift you a copy of this? Because I want you to have one. Okay, Luke chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Many people have tried to tell the story of what God has done among us. They wrote what we had been told by the ones who were there in the beginning and saw what happened. So I made a careful study of everything and then decided to write and tell you exactly what took place. Honorable Theophilus, I have done this to let you know the truth about what you have heard. Book close. So that is the prologue, the introduction to the book of Luke. 
So I hope you will stay with me as we journey through this great book together. And I hope that I gave us a overview. You know, I have, you know, so many books here that I read and I take notes and I try to put some things together um, just so that we can be on the same page. So I hope you'll stay with me because this is going to be a good time. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your patience with us, and thank you, God, for allowing us to study your word together. God, I pray that you will help us to know more about Luke so that we can understand more about you. Thank you, God, for revealing your eternal truth. I pray for every person who is here, every person who will come later. God, I pray that you will bless them because they want a closer relationship with you. We praise you, we worship you, we magnify you, and we thank you for being our God. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, that's it. So next week, we'll be in Luke chapter 1, and we'll see where we'll go from there. But thank you so much for being here, and I hope that you keep your physician in your head, okay? We're going to spend some time with Luke. God bless you. You're welcome, uh, Sister Benita. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. See you later. Well, I guess not really, but yeah, see you later. Okay. Well, see me later. <laughs> Have a great evening.